So the challenge was how to write this bar with the upper voice in the left hand having a stem which extends all the way to the upper stave. I'll speak it through bit by bit. So I've worked out how to do it, but on the way there were some quite strange things going on. So I'll show you how to work around those. So I'm going to do it step by step. First of all, the chord. So I'm choosing the D. Just get it in the right octave. All right, and then I'm going to turn this into a chord by just putting the interval above it. Now what I tend to do personally is I just create a chord irrespective of voices and I just choose a note in the chord and then assign it to a voice. So Alt and 2 instantly assigns this to voice 2. So now I've got the separate voices which I can manipulate accordingly. So I go to my top note and create that first chord. It's an interval of a third below, so shift and three. So I've got that chord. That's that sorted. Voice two, which is the stem going down. I want to drag to where it needs to be, B flat. It's now underneath that chord. So in order to drag it across to the right, which is what we want to do, then we need to pull up the inspector. Inspector is command, shift and I, but because I'm using my left hand for my phone to film this, then not even my large hands, actually let me do it over the right hand side, command shift and I, there we go. So it's pulled up the inspector, or the other way of doing it is of course to right click on the note and then it brings up a menu and at the bottom of the menu you've got the inspector. So it's the inspector you want and then it's offset, offsetting drags notes up and down on the vertical plane, Y, and on the horizontal plane, X. So of course, down moves it across to the left, and up moves it across to the right. So you do that on the individual note, and here you do. Here you go, sorry, <laughs> mixing my words up. Here you go, you've got the B flat now across to the right. If it needs to be adjusted a little later, of course, now you know how to do it using the X in the inspector. Now we go to the left hand. So the chord we have, we have an F with the stem going up. All right, and then you want, as you can see, the stem is going down because I've only got one voice at the moment, but to create another voice, again, I'm just gonna add a random note to that chord. And then as I've done above, I'll just select that note at the bottom and then I'll assign it to, so alternate to, I'll assign it to voice two. So here we do. Here we go. I keep saying here we do, sorry. <laughs> here we go. I've got the note in voice two. So now I can drag it to where it needs to be, which is a B flat. And then of course it's an octave on top of that. So I just press eight, creates the octave. And then I take this stem and then I drag the stem all the way up until it meets its cousin in the upper stave. All right, this B flat, probably a little bit too close for comfort. So again, I just use the offset to, and here you have it. There's your chord. So do you have to do this for every single one? No, what you can do, you can copy and paste. Now, something that I discovered is that when I copied and pasted this, when I pasted it into the second beat, the stem went back to normal size. So because I'm filming this using my left hand, I can't do what I want to do. So I'm going to pause it, I'm going to copy it and paste it and show you what happens. So now everything is selected. Next I'm going to copy it, Command C. Look what happens when I paste into the next beat. It's pasted everything, but the stem has now been reset to normal size. Isn't it weird? Look at what happens now when I paste that into the first beat of the next 
bar. Everything's how I want it. Isn't that strange? So it seems that with this, it's worked out which beat of the bar it also is. And we'll only put the stem up if it's in the equivalent beat of the bar where the stem was extended in the first place. I don't quite understand why. Now, it could just be a bug. It could just be my system. Maybe it will work perfectly on your system. But if that does happen, like it's happened on my system, then just do your first bar and do exactly the same thing. Now, look what happens when I select and copy and paste. So now all the notes of my second beat are selected. So I shall copy. Now, look what happens when I go to beat three. I'm now going to paste. Can you see what happens? It's pasted everything, but this is being restored to its normal size. So let me just press Command Z to undo that. So now I'm going to go to beat two of the next bar. Beat two. Remember, this is on beat two on the first bar. Beat two. Look what happens. It works on beat two. So it would seem that when you've done this, it copies the beat of the bar. It is the position of the bar. It is, and copies that across as well. I, I don't understand why it would do that. I don't understand why it wouldn't just copy everything as I've selected it. And maybe I'm doing something wrong, but it just seems a bit odd that it also selects the beat of the bar as well. And so if I want to obviously do anything on the third beat, I do exactly the same thing. I will copy this on my third beat so command c now what i'm going to do i'm going to purposely just go to another empty bar and try to copy this onto the first beat doesn't work does it now i'm going to go across to the third beat look it does so for some strange reason it also copies which part of the bar <laughs> it's the strangest thing so what I would suggest you do is just create one bar. This might be easier than you actually doing everything separately. Just go back to the beginning, create one bar, all right? And then just edit each note accordingly. And then you can copy that bar. Bar has now been selected, so copy, all right? And then just paste it accordingly and then everything's now pasted, yeah? And then you can select, then you can just drag notes up and down accordingly. But at least it's all already formatted. All right, so do whatever you need to do wherever those notes need to be.